It's now my pleasure to in introduce to you uh, President Barack Obama's special envoy to the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, Rashad Hussein. Rashad's mission is to travel the world on behalf of President Obama, advising and engaging with officials and policymakers, religious leaders and scholars, activists and entrepreneurs. Rashad is also a longtime friend of the forum, having had his announcement as special envoy to the OIC announced during our 2010 forum here in Doha. It's my pleasure to invite Rashad now to address uh, all of you. Uh, uh, and to talk a little bit about the work that he does. Rashad? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Before we begin, I also want to uh, acknowledge the terrible tragedy uh, that occurred today where we lost uh, 19 people in, uh, in a terrible fire. One of the largest malls here, including 13 children, uh, and uh, we should uh, remember uh, all of those who lost their lives uh, and their families and, and friends in our prayers. It is uh, nice to be back here uh, at the forum again uh, amongst so many friends. I want to thank our conference hosts, the government of Qatar. Uh, the Brookings Institute, including uh, Duria and Steve, uh, who have been such great partners, and all the others who have done so much work on putting together another outstanding conference. Also, thank you to uh, His Excellency Ambassador Romehi uh, for your remarks and for being uh, such a good friend to us now uh, as Ambassador in the United States. And of course, I'd like to thank the OIC uh, and uh, His Excellency the Secretary General uh, for hosting this event tonight and for working with us uh, on, on so many projects over the last couple of years. Uh, as Zuria mentioned, I'm the President's Special Envoy uh, to the OIC, and it was actually during this forum just a couple of years ago that I was announced and began in this role. Needless to say, the world looks very different now than it did during the forum in 2010. We just witnessed a historic election in Egypt that no one predicted when we were last here. The reign of leaders such as Ben Ali and Gaddafi has also ended, and people all over the Middle East and North Africa continue to stand for their God-given rights. And there are some in the region who continue to massacre their people even as we speak, but their time will also come to an end. Osama bin Laden is gone, and his narrative has again been repudiated by people all over the world. The United States has ended the war in Iraq and is transitioning in Afghanistan. And all of this has happened since the last time that we gathered here in Doha. While there's still a lot of work to be done, it will be interesting to see what the world looks like the next time we are here. During this time, as Duria mentioned, I've been traveling around the world working with government officials, civil society, religious leaders, uh, youth, including students and others, uh, on a number of issues that we will be discussing at the forum. Our conversations typically focus on everything from Afghanistan and Pakistan, Iraq, the Middle East peace process, the revolutions that are taking place in the Middle East and North Africa, and the experiences of Muslims in the United States. And in addition to these political issues, We've also been involved with a number of countries in expanding partnerships around the world in areas such as education, entrepreneurship, health, science and technology, and others. A number of agencies and departments in our government are involved in this process as we seek to deepen and expand our comprehensive efforts. We've also been directly involved with the OIC on a number of partnerships some of which I'd like to briefly highlight for you tonight as we begin the forum. First, we've been working together with the OIC in the UN. When I began in this role, one of the first issues we faced was finding a way to work with the international community to craft a UN resolution on religious tolerance that the United States could also support. For years, the OIC had offered a resolution that we opposed because it focused on the controversial concept of defamation of religion and called for legal restrictions on speech. Such restrictions on freedom of expression typically fail and often make the situation worse than, they're meant, than those that they're meant to address. 
These types of restrictions, which frequently appear in the form of blasphemy laws, are often used to unfairly prosecute minorities, and sometimes members of majority populations as well. They are inconsistent with First Amendment protections in the United States and international law. We therefore sought a more effective approach, one that focused on areas of agreement rather than disagreement. Working together, we focused on a set of positive initiatives that states could take to address intolerance that we could all agree upon, rather than focusing on speech restrictions. Steps like education, interfaith dialogue, enforcing anti-discrimination laws, and protections for religious practice and collaborating with civil society. So we drafted a resolution around those positive action-oriented steps and it passed by consensus in the Human Rights Council and later at the UN General Assembly. That resolution now forms the basis of a process to assist and encourage states in implementing those steps. As we address all forms of intolerance around the world, including anti-Islamic sentiment, we are increasingly concerned about mistreatment of minorities in Muslim-majority countries as well. The United States government condemns violence against non-Muslim minorities in Muslim-majority countries and continues to urge governments to take all necessary and available measures to address the root causes of such violence and tensions. We appreciate the statements of the OIC Secretary General condemning attacks against religious minority groups in Muslim-majority countries. The OIC has been among the earliest to speak out against sectarian strife in Pakistan, Egypt, Nigeria, Iraq, Indone and Indonesia and has condemned the assassinations of leaders such as Governor Tasir and Minister Bhatti in Pakistan, and the deadly violence at churches and other sacred sites of religious minorities. A second area of partnership has been in the humanitarian realm. I am pleased to report that as a de development of our cooperation on humanitarian efforts in Somalia and the Horn of Africa, we signed an MOU with the OIC on humanitarian cooperation at the White House earlier this year. We are already developing ways to work together further with our international partners on a number of pressing areas, including the crises in the Horn of Africa, Syria, and Yemen. I would also like to highlight the very positive gesture by the OIC Secretary General in naming the first special envoy to Afghanistan and the opening of the first OIC office in Kabul in January 2011. By being president of Afghanistan, which is a founding member of the OIC, the OIC has been able to see first, firsthand the needs of the people of Afghanistan and work directly with them in planning future projects and reaching out to OIC members concerning their needs. During my recent visit to Afghanistan, I heard a deep desire by Afghans with, within the religious community and others in the government for stronger ties and exchanges with the broader Muslim community. Third, we continue to be in regular contact with the OIC as it becomes more involved in a number of international issues. We appreciated the Secretary General's support for a no-fly zone in Libya. The OIC was amongst the first to call for this measure to protect the Libyan people. And we continue to work with the OIC and its members to solidify international support for others, including the Syrian people. Fourth, we continue our ongoing cooperation on health issues, including polio eradication and efforts to improve maternal and child health. The U.S. OIC partnership to eradicate polio was announced during President Obama's speech in Cairo in 2009. Since the U.S. OIC partnership to eradicate polio was announced, we have been working closely together tirelessly to advance the shared goal of complete worldwide polio eradication. We've witnessed tremendous successes in OIC member states and recognize that although we are close to the goal of complete eradication, the final push will require a renewed commitment to this cause by the international community. Building on experiences from our polio, polio partnership, in 2010, the US and the OIC expanded our cooperation in health to include maternal and newborn health initiatives. The goal of this U.S. OIC collaboration is to catalyze support in selected member states to achieve targets for reduction of maternal and newborn deaths through the increased availability and accessibility to neonatal, postpartum, and newborn care. Finally, we continue to partner with the OIC in areas such as entrepreneurship and science and technology. Last December, the OIC Youth Forum hosted a conference on the margins of Prime Minister Ajwan's follow-up summit to President Obama's Entrepreneurship Summit. We look forward to working with the OIC as we plan for the next summit in the UAE at the end of the year. 
we continue to work with the OIC to make cooperation in science and technology a core component of our partnership with Muslim communities as well. Specifically, we focus on expanding partnerships with the OIC to support women in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields. Last year, we partnered with the OIC to convene a symposium in Washington to highlight the importance of women in STEM fields. We are working on future collaborations with the OIC to improve and expand upon opportunities for women, science, for women scientists and others in these areas. I want to thank you all uh, again for being such wonderful partners uh, with us over the last couple, a couple of years. A lot of the work that we've been doing has been uh, with other governments uh, and, and uh, diplomats around the world, but many of them have been on uh, projects with uh, many that I see uh, in this room here. And I think that uh, we've come a long way, but we still have a tremendous amount of work to do. I want to thank again our uh, Qatari hosts and Brookings and to the OIC for hosting the reception. We're looking forward to seeing many of you at the events and the workshops uh, that are scheduled, and we'll also be joined uh, later uh, in this week in this week by our Deputy National Security Advisor, Dennis McDonough, who will provide a more uh, detailed account on many of the issues which I've just touched on tonight. Thank you again, uh, and best wishes uh, for an outstanding forum.